Hi it's Dave, so it's been another really good few days on the LEAF to RX8 project. Um, I've got the charger working and the DC to DC converter working, which is then pretty much everything I need to now start putting stuff back into the RX8. Um, the charger's been a bit more tricky than other bits and pieces because it's just not as much information on the web um, and everything I've found so far has kind of been scattered all over the winds. I'm sure if you've researched this yourself, it's just all over the place. Um, the charger, there's really not so much information out there, so I've had to be referring back to a lot of the manuals to get the wiring diagrams, to power the thing, to start to understand what it needs. But um, it seems to be fairly straightforward, as most of the LEAF stuff does, to be honest. Um, simply powering and turning on the power distribution module, or the charger, uh, gets the DC to DC converter working. So I'll just show you that first and then we'll, we'll move on to the charger part. So I've got uh, wiring diagrams, uh, information about the power delivery system and I've kind of been reverse engineering the pinout for the charger, so that's this piece here. Um, it's all in the same wiring loom <coughs> as the inverter which all comes to the main car connector here. And um, so I've now got it wired up with all the appropriate voltages, 12 volts and grounds that it needs. There's a fail-safe switch, which I must admit doesn't appear to do a great deal. Um, I haven't really, there is some literature on it. I need to do a bit of reading up on that. The uh, EV can is connected. So that's connected from the charger and the inverter there on the same EV can. And um, got the battery over here, which at the moment is reading 12.4 volts. So at the moment I've got no Arduino plugged in, no CAN bus commands going on. This is just raw wiring and powering. And if I turn on the relay system, so that's the pre-charge, then the main relays, all turned on. If I come back over here and give it a moment, we will see that it just naturally starts charging the battery. There we go, 14 volts. So that's with no CAN commands or anything, all you've got to do is literally power it in the right way and it just works and it will just power the, uh, sorry, power, it will charge the 12 volt battery. So there we go. Job done with the DC DC converter, much simpler than I expected. I have noted that if I put the charger into an error state, if I send it bogus CAN commands or make it charge and then take the commands away, it will stop. DC to DC converter. So I think if you put it into an error state, it does stop working. So dead simple. Next thing was the uh, charger. So it looks like you do have to send CAN commands to initiate charging. What I've got over here is my standard charger cable plugged in da -da 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 -da, all the way into there. So I haven't really looked at the fast charger. I'm probably not going to look at the fast charger to be honest. I don't have a way of using it and um, I've not investigated that at all, but I'm quite happy just to be able to get the standard charger working. So this, if I open up the cupboard up here, is plugged in. It's also plugged into this device, which when turned on, gives me information about how many watts are powering through the plug. It's a really handy device. I use it for various bits and pieces to see just how much power things are using. And it's quite interesting. Sometimes even just like a phone charger is just using power even when it's off. Um, so yeah, very handy little device. So that's good to tell me if the charger is actually drawing any watts of power. I'll turn that off. <coughs> My charger device here, it has a power, a connected, a charging and a fault. Uh, power comes on when you turn it on. Connected is an interesting one. Down on the leaf here has an uh, interconnector, two wires and they are, I just found out the pinout for those into the main wiring harness which goes round into the charger. So I am just basically passing through those two wires into the DC to DC converter. Not really sure what they do, but they come through into the connector. They are two pins there. Personally, I think it's just an interconnector. I think you just connect them together and it tells the charger that the charging cable is in, in and it also tells the charger that it's in because this chart this sorry this connected light lights up when the interconnector is connected if it's not it doesn't so obviously it's quite an important thing to get right because otherwise the thing isn't going to charge so next thing to do there so we're currently on i've got my relays on high voltage is on we're charging at 14 volts next thing to do is just to simply plug in the usb cable for my arduino if i can do that one-handed there we go that should light my Arduino up. 
There we go, I get a beep. Don't know if that's come out of the camera, but my charger made a very high pitch squealing noise. So now if I come over here and turn on my charger, I get a power connected and the charging light flashes, which in the instructions says it's charging. I'm only pulling about seven watts, but that's because my battery pack is full. So what happens very quickly is the charging light goes solid, which is indica indicative of the battery pack being fully charged. And if I measure the voltage across the batteries, they're all at about 4.1 volts, which damn as near it is fully charged. So whoever crashed this leaf must have fully charged it, <coughs> got off their driveway and pretty much crashed it straight away. So I'm kind of happy that that's working. I can't really test it fully. I think once I drain the batteries a bit, I'll be able to check the current in the BMS because the BMS will register the current. I assume it will either be a negative current because it's going backwards or it will just register it as a positive current. Um, but I should see that and that should match the amount of power that this is saying I've got coming out. Now it's going to be difficult to drain the batteries really. Um, I haven't really thought what I might do. I might just spin the motor and but uh, unloaded it's not going to use a great deal of power so that's a bit tricky. But I'm kind of happy that's working. I don't think I need to do a great deal more. RX-8 stripped down is pretty much done. I've just got to drop the gearbox and motor out now. Um, that'll be that stripped out ready to accept the new stuff. Still a lot of planning to do. Um, infrastructure stuff, welding and just understanding what adapter plates I need, splines to make and, um, and the designs for those. So a bit of work there but um, it's good to start making the progress to look at that because now I've got all this understood I'm fully confident that I should be able to get this working in the car and uh, a fully operational RX-8. So as I say, don't forget to subscribe and I'll keep updating as much as I can with videos. I was going to produce a little three-part series on batteries and I'll be honest with you, I recorded the first episode and it was crap. Um, I recorded it again and God, it was boring and crap. So um, maybe I'm not cut out to do kind of informational stuff like that. But I will keep updating on this project and um, as I say, subscribe and we'll uh, keep you up to date. Thank you very much.